So here is my son's uh, Instant Vortex Plus air fryer. And it no longer works. Uh, when you plug it in to the wall, nothing lights up here on the front. And uh, just did not work. So they brought it to me to see if uh, perhaps I could fix it. And I did. And I'll tell you, the, I'm going to tell you what I did to fix it. And I'm going to recommend what you should try to do to see if maybe your thermal fuse is bad. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pry this top off with a flat blade screwdriver, a pretty good size one, not a real small one, because there's a tab right here and a tab right here that are underneath this part. So you're going to have to stick the flat blade screwdriver in there and push those tabs forward and then pry up. So we've got a tab here, a tab here, a tab here, and a tab here, and two tabs over on the other side. So a total of six tabs that you have to uh, pry off of there. And I'm going to show you those in a little bit on how I got into this top. So once you have those six tabs freed up, then you need to be careful because there's a ribbon that goes from a circuit board that's right located right inside here. And that ribbon comes over and it goes through an opening and is plugged into the circuit board that controls all of this display here. So whenever you have this thing, just lift it forward and be careful because you've got a, a, a disconnect on the ribbon right here. And once you disconnect that ribbon, then this whole top will be free. So uh, I'm going to show you that. Okay, so I've moved this thing in here on my uh, pool table, which I put a blanket on there to kind of protect the pool table, but uh, sometimes it turns into my work table. So I'm going to pry this top off, and I've got a pretty good screwdriver, good size screw blade screwdriver here, and uh, another flat blade screwdriver. And you want to just stick this underneath here. And the tabs that you've got to free up are about right in there. About right in there. And I might stick this other one inside of here. Okay, that small one just went inside. And it sounds like you broke it. But all I did was free up the tab that's inside of there. Okay, and so you want to keep this lift up. You want to keep lifting up. Over on the other side, there's another tab. And I just popped up that tab. And now there's going to be two on each side. And I can get to this one over here the easiest. Okay. So I just popped up that tab. And keep going and pop up the other tab here in the front. Okay. Just popped up that tab. The two on the sides have been freed up. Now I'm going to turn it around here so you can see the ribbon. Here's the ribbon that comes through an opening. You can see that ribbon coming through that opening. And you want to be careful with this ribbon. There's a little button that you're going to push down on right here. Push down on that and then pull it apart. Now your display has been completely freed up from the top.
Okay, I'm gonna put it on pause. I wanna show you the four screws. There's four screws that hold this top onto the rest of it. Okay, so the screw holes are one, two, three, and four. So if I tilt it on its side here, look down inside of there, there's a Phillips head screw. One, two, three, and four. You take those four out, and then you can lift up this top, and then you can get to the uh, fuse, the thermal fuse down in there. I'm going to pause it. Okay, so with the Phillips head screwdriver, uh, this one just does happen to have a magnet on it, which helps. I'm going to undo those four screws. Here's one of them. I don't think you need to see me undo all of them. I'm going to pause it. Okay, so I've loosened those four screws. Uh, three of them came out on my magnetized Phillips head screwdriver, but uh, the fourth one doesn't want to come out of there. And this ribbon, I recommend you pull it through that opening before you take the top off so it doesn't get hung up on it and mess it up. And this thing should just pretty much lift off of there. It's got the one screw left down inside of there, but no big deal. Okay, I'm going to pause it again. Okay, so we have the top off. I've gotten out my uh, meter over here for testing for continuity. And this right here is the uh, thermal fuse. And this blue wire comes from the power cord. And this brown wire, so this blue wire comes from the power cord and this brown wire comes from the power cord. And this yellow wire over here also comes from the power cord. This yellow and green is your ground. The blue and the brown are your power. Okay, this blue wire hooks into the thermal fuse directly from the power cord to the uh, thermal fuse. And I'm taking this video after the fact. But when I first tested uh, this thermal fuse, there was no continuity from this side of the thermal fuse to the other side of the thermal fuse. And that told me right then and there that was my problem because this comes directly from the power cord. And if you can't get continuity from one side to the other side, then there's no power going over here to the rest of these wires. There's no power going to this circuit board and there's no power going to the display. So I knew right away that this thermal fuse was probably bad. And I went through the trouble of taking the whole thing apart so that I could get this thermal fuse out and read the labeling on it so I'd know what to buy. But apparently I didn't need to do that. Uh, after I got it completely apart and I took this took this lead off, which comes from your from your uh, power cord, took this one off. And I had the whole thing apart. I'm going to pause it for just a second and get you a little closer view. Okay, so now we've got a little closer view of that thermal fuse, the back side of it, where the uh, wiring hooks up to it. So if I get my screwdriver here, you see this post sticking up right there? Where there's a screw coming into that from the bottom, so it would be coming up this way, up, and there's a post over here, which also has a screw in it, 
which comes up from the bottom side. And you have to take this top completely off in order to get to those two screws. And you have to take the metal plate, which is on the inside in here, you have to take that metal plate off. And there's several screws that hold that metal plate on. And you have to take that uh, heating element off. Just so you can get to those screws that come in from from the bottom side, from from the from this side back there. After you get the plate off, you would see those screws. You take them out because they're screwed into these two posts here. And then what I did was I pushed on this thing to push it out, and it it was in there pretty tight. It didn't want to come out, so I pushed on that black tab sticking up right there and I think when I pushed on that black tab right there I reset this thing because there was no continuity until I pushed it out and in order to push it out I had to take the screws out and then I was trying to push it out and it didn't want to come out but I pushed on that black tab that I'm showing you right there and once I got it out, then I checked it for continuity one more time before I decided to, before I ordered one. And it had continuity. And I thought, what the heck? It didn't have continuity before, but now it has continuity. And the only thing I can figure is that when I pushed on that tab, that black tab there, I must have reset it. I, I don't know what else to tell you. So, if you're having problems when you plug it in, you get no display, you can't do anything, I'm recommending that you take this display off, and I showed you how to do that. You take this top off, and I showed you how to do that. You take the four screws out. And then you check for continuity from this post to that post. And if you're not getting continuity, then that's your problem. So the next thing I want you to try is to just push on that black tab a couple of times. Maybe it even turns. You can turn it with your fingers. And you can lift it up with your fingernail. Anyway, uh, fiddle around with that black tab and then check for continuity again. And if you're getting continuity after you fiddled with it, then you fixed your problem. Then you can hook it back up, you can put these wires back on here. And uh, I can't do it and look through this camera at the same time. Anyway, you put those wires back on and then uh, hook your ribbon back up to your display, plug it in, and see if your display comes on, because that's what happened with me. I mean, after I got continuity, I thought, well, I wonder now if I put the thing back together, if it's going to work. Because at first I didn't have continuity, and then after I took the whole thing apart and got this out and had it in my hand, and I had to push on that black part to get it out of there, uh, I had continuity. So then I put the whole thing back together and sure enough it worked. So if you can't reset it, which is what I think I ended up doing by pushing on that, if you can't get continuity, then you're going to have to order one. And then you're going to have to do, uh, I might make a second part to this video or even a third part to show you how to get to that thermal fuse to get it out of there and to order another one to replace that one. But hopefully you'll be lucky like I was and you'll be able to reset it, which is what I think I did by pushing on that. And you won't have to order a new one and you won't have to tear the whole thing apart just so you can get to this thermal fuse. That's about all I'm going to tell you right now.